Hey there, gamers. Welcome to the Secret Levels Podcast. I hope you got your boots all laced up and your gloves on tight, because we have one heck of a fight for you tonight on the show. I'm player one, Toby. And I am player two, Goobs. And we are a retro video game review show. We take one old video game per week. And uh, we dissect it, and we learn about it, and we play the shit out of it, and then we review it. We grow to love and or hate it. (laughs) And we're also part of the Somebody's Network. That's right. Check out the Somebody's Network on Instagram and Twitter at Somebody's Net. And check out some of the great shows like Best Darn Diddly. Like Secret Transmission Podcast. Or the Derailers Podcast. Oh, two Splendid shows, two different yeah. things totally, but amazing. And they create one baby together, and that is this show. <laughs> so, yeah, go check out Somebody's Network. Lots of great shows. Random Ramblings with Rob. There's a whole bunch of shit on there. Throw Down Thursday, the Nerd or Not, Cretans Guild podcast. Yes. So, anyways. Friends. Let's get away from our friends, though. Let's play a one-player game and just sit yeah. in the dark by ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Because we got to put these boxing gloves on and just go to town. Hey. Hey, Doc. Where are you, man? Doc. Hey, Doc. I really need you right now. Yeah, I'm ready to fight, man. Let's go. Let's lace up. I'm a little fat. <laughs> Well, today we are talking about Punch Out, or we could possibly be talking about Mike Tyson's Punch Out. So, come see, come saw. Uh, there's one major difference in that game. I'm sure we'll yeah. get to it. We'll get to all that in a little while with the fun facts. But uh, which one did you play? Did you play Mike Tyson's or just regular old Punch Out? I own Mike Tyson's Punch Out, but I played because most of my crap is packed up right now. So I played on the NES Classic. I played the, just Punch Out. So that's nice and accessible for me to grab right now. You know, I've got Mike Tyson's punch out as well, and that's exactly what I did. I'm lazy and didn't want to hook up a uh, Nintendo device, so I. It's played still a the Nintendo classic. device. Well, technically, okay. the actual Nintendo device. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I also played on the NES Classic. It's more convenient. It's gonna upscale it to HD, so I I just figured that was the best way to go. You know, we'll just dive right into it let's just start hitting the speed bag oh yes let's do that indeed (laughs) okay so uh this was actually released as a gold version just called punch out and it was released in japan on september 18th 1987 so the the cartridge was actually gold god damn i wonder how much that goes for i don't know i didn't look into it i've never seen that before so what ended up happening was they ended up uh making it mike tyson's punch out and then it was released in north america october 18th 1987 they get a big name behind it brand it sell millions of copies because this version sold so well japan actually got the same version that normally doesn't happen it's usually japan to america yes that's how we got mario brothers 2 Right. So it it is it is interesting that it happened that way. But we'll get more into that in a little while with all the fun facts and whatnots. So this was developed by Nintendo R and D three and this was published by Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. And this was actually an arcade cabinet originally. Which is much different than the actual game. I've played that like in the last few years at a barcade and it was like, oh, this is a little different to get used to, but it's still kind of the same essence of the game. Yeah, it's 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 not exactly the same, but it's close enough. Uh, it looks a lot better than the NES game. See, so I don't that, know. I love those sprites, man. Yeah, I do too, but it's got... Uh, it's definitely more polished. I'll, I'll give it that. Yeah, so that came out in 1983 and then... It was also released... Really? That came yeah. out 34 years ago. Yeah, so this... uh, this The arcade version came out 
four years before it was on NES and Famicom. So it's also available on the Wii, the Wii U, the Nintendo 3DS, and that's on all the virtual stores for the most part. There's been also Super Punch-Out and the Punch-Out for Wii. Yeah, yeah, there's been a couple of sequels. It's also playable on Animal Crossing on GameCube if you unlock it. Yes, you can unlock a whole bunch of Nintendo games on there. Right. And these characters show up all over the place. They've showed up in Fight Night Round 2 on the GameCube, uh, Captain Rainbow. Little Mac is also playable in the Super Smash Bros. on the Wii U and 3DS. Yes, he sure is. He's one of my mains. I like him. Can't wait to play him in the next Smash Bros. This is definitely one of the top ten, like, Nintendo characters, I think. Little Mac. I might oh, yeah, wrong, and one of the but, top 10 games, too. If you don't have this in your NES collection, what are you doing? I mean, that's why it's on the classic. You know, it, you got your Mario's 1, you, you could put Zelda 2. Uh, you know, there's there's certain characters in the Nintendo franchise, and Little Mac might be lower on, on the top 10, but he's still in there, I think. Or I would, I would think so, like for iconicness. Oh, hell yeah. He's solid, man. Rock solid. He kicks people's asses. A whole bunch of people. So, like you said earlier, this is a one-player game, and it's a boxing sports game. Because, you know, you punch out. I never thought I would love a sports game as much as I do this one. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. I think we're going to have skewed uh, uh, ratings at the end of this. Well, no, it's a solid game in and out. We'll, We'll touch on that right now. Well, real quick, let me tell you about the story. A young man named Little Mac meets a man by chance one day named Doc Lewis. Doc teaches Mac all about boxing. And with some hard work and effort, and under Doc's expert guidance, Mac joins the World Video Boxing Association. Now he must climb the ranks to face off against the world champion. And then he's going to be challenged by either Mike Tyson or (laughs) Mr. Dream. Yes. he wins. So yes, uh, that's the story. It's, it's pretty, pretty much uh, the story of Rocky. Instead yeah. of Mickey got Doc, and instead of Sly Stallone or Rocky, you got Little Mac. <laughs> a 17-year-old who's fighting all these grown men. Oh yeah, I did forget to add that he was 17 in there. Yeah, he's just a, he's just a little kid. He's a prodigy you know, though. He's built this fucking like a shit brick house for a 17-year-old. So uh, this game will take you around two to three hours to beat and if you don't figure out the patterns of uh the the opponents it's, oh, gonna, it's gonna take, take even longer, longer than that. now i did see a speedrunner on speedrun.com he has a record of 15 minutes and 10 seconds his name is summoning salt yep he also does it blindfolded as well he can do it in under 20 oh my god like that's beat tyson stupid. and everything He just goes by sound and just knows, like, what to do during every match. God. You You can watch that on, uh, as I always say here, Awesome Games Done Quick. Check it out. Man, that's ridiculous. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. He's blindfolded and beats, smokes it. He stumbles a couple times, but uh, he does it. I'm pretty sure he got beat by Glass Joe. (laughs) But then he picked it back up and just, like, rocked the shit out of that game. Pretty impressive. Yeah, that's crazy. That's super crazy. Uh, Let's talk about some gameplay. How about that? Yeah. Left, right, and punch. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty simple. And I I think that's one of the. Oh, wait, back to duck. You got a duck, too? Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't remember the duck, and I accidentally hit the duck uh, down twice. Well, it's not really duck. It's more like he puts your fist up the block. Well, oh, well, yeah. if If you hold down, it blocks, but if you hit down twice. It, like, does a dodge. Like, he bobs his head. And I was like, what? I've never seen that before. So well, there's I, something I new every day. Yeah, you know, I've been playing this game for 20-some-odd years and never noticed that. Uh, but it's it's a fairly easy game to pick up. My nine-year-old walked in and was like, hey, what's this? I was like, oh, it's Punch-Out. And he was like, oh, can I try? I was like, sure. He got... uh he he beat three guys. <laughs> it's pretty impressive time. for your first time playing it. Yeah, like he caught on pretty quick. You know, I, I showed him the buttons and told him. Uh, I, I was gonna just give hand him the control and be like, figure it out. So he was the you're the doc to his little Mac. You're you're right. Man, are you gonna buy him a pink uh, 
tracksuit and like chase him down the street on a bike. Run faster! He's running with a controller in his hand, pushing the buttons. I'm just going to tell him to join the Nintendo Club or whatever the <laughs> stupid quote is. Uh, but yeah, so you have six moves you can use. You can go left. You can go right. You can press down and block. You can press down twice, and that'll do the dodge like I was saying. Uh, a and B will do a body blow to... Yeah, left or right. That's your A and B. And then uh, if you hold up and press the A or B button, it'll do like a jab to the face. Yeah, on either side. Like a, right. B is left and A is right, I think. Yeah. Could be the other way around. But yeah, so you want to get good at dodging left and right because when they swing at you, you want to dodge. Now, you can block like we said, but you take chip damage. Yes, and then you go pink and then be very upset because you can't punch. You're just breathing. Uh, uh, and you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. Right. So uh, you turn pink because you've got these little hearts up in the corner. And, uh, you know, that's how you know how many punches you have left. Or how many how many times you can swing or, or take a hit or yeah, whatever. Yeah, before you get tired. Yeah, and then you have or to gassed. rest. And then, and then you have to dodge so you can kind of gain your momentum back and then you can start whooping ass again. And there's something else next to those hearts there that's very, very important. Yeah, so you can get these uh, little stars by hitting your opponent right before or after they attack you. And once you get one of these stars, you can press the start button and it'll do a super punch. Isn't it select? Uh, I thought it was start. It's one of those buttons down there in the middle. <laughs> We're professionals. <laughs> I, I could have swore I was hitting start, but now now I'm second guessing myself. I thought start pause the game. No, no, that's there is no pause. You cannot pause. Okay, so pause then it. it may be start. I'm probably wrong. I pulled the goobs. <laughs> you were close. <laughs> <laughs> There's special patterns that you can like interrupt for the guys you're fighting. And then that's what a good position to get a star is like King Hippo. You can smack him at a certain time and you get a star. Same with all the guys. When their guard is down and you give them a nice punch at the right moment, you get that star like, yes. And then you go do it again and again. And build those stars up and just smack these bitches all over the ring. <laughs> well, and you know, there's there's patterns with all these opponents that you'll learn, like how what they do before they swing, and it's like playing. A you have poker. to learn. You got to watch their eye movements and like watch their body movements. You got to. That's the all dot triggers. On their hat. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's you have to learn the patterns. So basically, they give you an opening. So you have to learn the pattern so you can find the opening to hit them. But if you hit them in one of the unopened times, that's usually when you get a star. It's like, oh, you, you snuck that in. Yeah. You're a star. <laughs> and if you miss one of those opportunities, you can be punished. Yeah, they'll they'll block it, and then they'll whoop your ass if you're not quick enough to dodge right after after they block your punch. It's kind of like a puzzle game in that sense, too. Like, you got to figure out the way to defeat your opponent. Yeah. It's just a boxing game. You want to knock your opponent down for a count of ten, or three times in one round for a TKO. And each round is three minutes for three rounds total. And if you don't win in those three rounds, uh, you're done. Yep. It's an automatic loss for you. I don't know. I don't get that. You'd think it would go to the judge's points. It would be awesome and... if they have like Toad, Luigi, and Peach <laughs> holding up the <laughs> cards for you. Because we have a special guest referee for this one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mario is in the uh, referee outfit in the middle of the ring with you. <laughs> I love the, like that little shout out to Mario there. Like it could have been any kind of spray. It could have been just a random guy in a shirt, like a ref shirt. But no, they had to throw Mario in there. Yeah. Now this this dips into my fun fact territory, but that wasn't supposed to be in there. That was just like a placeholder. And when they were testing it, because they had seen it so much, I guess they forgot that they weren't supposed to use it. They didn't get the uh, permission from Big Nintendo to actually put it in the game. <laughs> so luckily, they were just like, "That's eh, cool." <laughs> so they could have gotten some trouble for that i bet could this have been one of the first sports games that mario showed up in uh well donkey kong that's not a sport though oh yeah well he, uh was Unless he you consider jumping barrels and killing giant well, I... apes uh, thing. wasn't wasn't there a nintendo golf or golf or something that had mario in it yeah it definitely didn't that was a black box game so that could have been it yeah i don't remember but so if you do get knocked down, 
you know how you get back up? Let me let me explain how you get back up so you don't get counted out of 10. So what you're going to do is you're going to scream and cuss, mash all the buttons as hard as you can, and you're going to just fucking scream how cheap this goddamn game is and that <laughs> the fucking computer just cheated. And that's how you get back up. <laughs> Is that is that the best way you would describe it? Yeah, no, that's exactly how you do it. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> and then Matt gets back up sometimes, and sometimes you're like, bullshit. I love when you knock so. out the other opponent, though, and you hear that. <laughs> <laughs> when they kind of like their sprite turn side to side. Yeah, and they kneel over, and they fall like side to side, and then they hit the ground. Yeah, it is pretty funny. I hate when they get up at one, though. Oh, yeah, because you're like, oh, what the fuck? I just gave you a special right before I laid you out, bitch, and now you're like, ho, 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 I'm back. You know, it's it's very, uh, it reminds me a lot of playing Pokemon back in the day, because, you know, when the Pokeball yeah, twitches, when the ball opens. <laughs> and you're like, motherfucker, why, you twitched at one and opened up, <laughs> or you twitched at, you know, because it twitches like three times before it catches it, and yeah. you're like, just stay fucking shut and then on the third one you're like oh, i got it and it still pops open and you're like you bitch <laughs> yeah that's pretty much this game in a nutshell when the guys get back up that's a good yeah. uh good little thing there you did toby congrats yeah. hey thank you studio audience approves <laughs> So this uh, game luckily has a password system for each circuit that you manage to get to. There's no save points or anything. It's just a password system. Which and works well for this game. Yeah. Now, you can't go back to the exact fight that you were at when you... No, it takes either... you to the beginning of the bouts before you get to the big guy. Yeah. So you have to... I mean, you may skip a couple of circuits, but you're going to start at the first guy of that particular set of fights. Hopefully not glass jokes. That's not even worth putting that code in. <laughs> well, since you've uh, said glass, Joe, you want me to give you the list of all of the uh, opponents that yeah, you so may let's fight? let's talk about the stereotypical people that you fight in this game. <laughs> so there's 22 matches in this game total, and you're going to fight 10 different opponents, and some of them get rematches. So some of them you're fighting twice. Yeah, they get harder the second time around. Well, uh, some yeah. of them. Crazy. So you got glass, Besides Joe. Adam Sandler. <laughs> That one guy looks like Adam Sandler. He I does. don't care. Uh, you're talking about Don uh, Flamenco? Yep. Yeah, you're right. He does. I never thought about that. Would you laugh so. at that swan? <laughs> so we got Glass Joe, Von Kaiser, Piston Honda, Don Flamenco, King Hippo, Great Tiger, Bald Bull, Mr. Sandman, the Super Macho Man. Not Randy Savage, just Super Macho Man. <laughs> and either, whichever game you're playing, you either you have Mike Tyson. my favorite name. Which one? Soda Popinski. Oh, I didn't even write that one down, did I? Holy shit. Yeah, Soda Pop... Say it again. I, I can't ever say it right. Soda Popinski. Yeah, Soda Popinski. Yeah, I, I completely don't even have that on my damn list. You either fight Mike Tyson or Mr. Dream at the very end. Again, depending on which game you played. Mike Tyson and Mr. Dream are basically the same characters. They have the same sprites, and they even have some of the same moves. Oh, man, those 30 seconds of punches you get at you and you just got to kind of endure the pain. Yeah. It's tough. Have you ever beat the main uh, character on each game? Not each game, either or. Okay, so I know for a fact that me and some buddies at work, because I had an emulator and I had a, a little USB controller, we sat one day and played for like five hours trying to beat Punch Out. On and company time, nice, on, nice. On company time. <laughs> this was uh, several years ago, so it can't be incriminating now. No. Nope. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, we did. I, I, I want to say we beat it, but I can't remember for sure because it was so long ago. So, and I and I did not beat it this round. I got up to. Uh, do you fight Bald Bull twice? Yes. It was someone that I had to fight for a second time. In yeah, the, you do fight him twice. I want to say it was the third circuit that I got stuck in, and I was just like, ah. But, yeah, I don't, I'd like to say I beat it just for my, my street cred, but <laughs> let's, just, let's just say I didn't. Have you beat it before? I've beat this game no less than ten times. Okay. No, I think it, around seven. Like, that's throughout my life. Like, I remember grinding and grinding. Sometimes, like, you you just put the code in and just, you want to just beat him. Like, let's go. 
Because if you can beat Tyson, you can beat the whole game. Let's just sum it up to that. Yeah, that's that's very true. But if you if you've never played this game and you want to challenge, just yeah, go, type in that code and go straight to Tyson. I oh, dare I'd, you. I'd love to see someone do that cause just to see the pure anger and frustration. <laughs> or if you pull it off, you're a god. So yeah, uh, let's talk about some of the controls. Like, how do you feel that they handle in this? It's one of the best parts of the game is the controls. They handle exactly how you want them to handle. The punches throw when you push the button. Left and right works perfectly. It's simple. It's very simple and it's done perfectly. So, yeah, I think this game benefits from having simple controls. Uh, It doesn't try to be too complicated. And I think that's what really helps this game out. Yeah, easy to pick up and play, hard to master. (laughs) And that's what the part of the challenge is. You don't want to put it down because you're like... Yo, I'm going to beat this bastard next time around. And he beats you again. I'm like, nope, I'm going to get you this time. Five times later. <laughs> you know, and, and I was I was really cocky when I f- first booted it up and started playing. Because I was like, damn, I'm remembering all the patterns. I got a little past, the, uh, I'd say, the last match in the second circuit. And then it just it hit me like, oh, you're not as good as you think you are. <laughs> so the one after Piston? Yeah, um, who would that be? Uh, Don Flamingo. No, Don Flamingo. I think it was Bald Bull the first time. It's Don Flamingo, uh, King Hippo, Great Tiger, and Bald Bull on, on the next like thing. It's got to be Bald Bull that messed me up in that that first round. Yeah, uh, he does that. That, that charge attack, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you have to hit it so perfectly, or you just get destroyed. Yeah, and you start going. Hoo-doo-doo, hoo-doo-doo. And see, I remembered that, I'm but really I just bad couldn't... of that sound effect. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I couldn't get the timing down, so I don't know what the deal was. But yeah, the, the controls are great. They're really responsive. It's easy to it's easy to learn. Like I said, my nine year old who doesn't like old games walked in and was like, "Yeah, let me try. Let me punch a guy in the face." Now he. His rage meter was at a 10. Let me let me just put that out there. Because he got so pissed because he was doing good. He beat the first guy. He beat the second guy. The third guy just whooped his ass. And he was just like, no. This I didn't have fun. to try to hook my son up on this game and see how he fares. <laughs> I, I actually recorded a, a little video of him playing, and it's on our Instagram. So go check that out at Secret Levels Pod if you want to see Gibson get pissed off. Oh, no, no, no. He actually won. He won, and he was really excited. So. so who's your? I just want before we move on here. Who's your favorite character? Like besides Little Mac in this game, like your most favorite sprite of the enemies that you fight, the other boxers. You know, I really like King Hippo. I think King Hippo is iconic as hell. Yeah, you punch him in his face and his pants fall down. And then he, <laughs> you punch him in the belly button. Yeah, well, he's got a band aid over his belly button for some reason. Yeah, because he pulls his pants up because he's so ashamed of his fat. That he pulls his pants up over his belly button. He must have a gross belly button like Baron Corbin. <laughs> From WWE, that is. <laughs> uh, I had to throw it in there because everyone makes fun of the belly button. Uh, yeah, no, I think King Hippo is one of the more iconic ones. I mean, if if you look he's at... He's made it into the other games, so he's pretty Yeah, that's pretty that's what I'm saying. So he's he's... He's the one that you think of when you think of Punch Out. I feel like. I kind of you... like the way Super Macho Man flexes his pecs at you. <laughs> Who doesn't love Super Macho Man? Oh yeah! <laughs> he, he he can't say "Oh yeah." He says, "Oh yes." <laughs> what about the music? What about the music? That that running theme, man. Oh, oh, oh. oh so good. It does have some good music in it for... Uh, and, like, the little music when people come to the ring, too. They all, like, some of them have, like, little intros. Yeah. You know not coming I... to the ring, but when they're hopping out of their corner or dancing or whatever the hell they do. Yeah, when they're flexing their macho muscles or... Yeah. They do have... Each of them have their own little tune, don't they? I didn't even think about that. Some people don't, though, but most do. Matt yeah. or the Ball Bolt doesn't. He's just straight business. You know, it's the music's uh, kind of repetitive during the fights, but it's not an annoying repetitive. You know? Yeah. Kinda, well, you're not really paying attention to the music. You're you're really focused on what the hell pattern you're gonna get in the, <laughs> in the match. That's right. 
so yeah, the music's good. Uh, we we all also have a very soft spot in our heart for this music because there's a uh, there was a rap duo. Dwayne and Brando. Yeah, they, Dwayne and Brando. The Adventures they, uh, of Dwayne and Brando. That's right. So they have a punch out song. You should go look it up on YouTube. It's pretty cool. They also do Mega Man Two. They do Little Nemo. Yeah, Little Nemo. <laughs> Finding <That one>. Nemo. <laughs> Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah, they do a, a bunch of songs and uh, Final so, Fantasy, Double Dragon, Battle Toads, Mario, Zelda. Yeah, so go check that out. Uh, they don't make any music together anymore, from what I understand, but it's still up on YouTube. Go check it out. And if you're listening for some reason, we'd love Hi. one of you to come on the show. <laughs> we like y'all a lot. Yeah, uh, both of you, but if only one wants to come, that's cool, man. <laughs> so what do you think is one of the worst aspects of this game? Uh, that's a hard one to think about. Uh, probably the difficulty when it gets to, like, near the end. Like, it ramps up. Like, it's on a significant level. Like, it starts off easy as hell, as you know. And it gets harder and harder from there. But, again, if you sit down and take the time, it's not that bad. But it is frustrating at times. Super frustrating. Right. Yeah, I, th- I think it's got a pretty decent progression. The graphics are great, like... Sure, they're a bit older and dated, but we love that stuff around here, so I'm going to appreciate every little pixel, every little nuance that this game has to deliver. Right. I I think one of the things that I really dislike on this one is how long in between rounds. Like, you have to let Doc say the same shit over and over, and all his one-liners whoa, whoa, are kind of stupid. he's hyping you up, man. He's getting you all ready for the next round. I, I get that, but, like, it feels like it takes so long. I don't know why. I'm, I'm just ready to get back in there and punch. And Doc's like, join the Nintendo Club. Um, <laughs> don't forget to duck and dodge. And you're like, yeah, thanks. The Captain five Fucking Ds. Obvious. Yeah. <laughs> the five Ds. From Dodgeball. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in so long. That's why I didn't quote it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you want me to hit you with some fun facts? Let's go right to fun facts with Toby. <laughs> That's the sound effect. He <laughs> kept so, it in there last time, you bastard. <laughs> did I? I? I can't remember. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> <laughs> when the original Famicom Gold version was released, Nintendo of America's founder attended a boxing match featuring Mike Tyson. So he was impressed with Tyson's power and skill. And he ended up, long story short, making a deal with Tyson to use his likeness and his name for $50,000 for three years. That's not bad. I wonder what that uh, exchanges to nowadays. Probably millions. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably something stupid like that. So this was before he had actually became the heavyweight champion. So this uh, was a pretty big risk for Nintendo to, you know, have this man who's not the champion on, on the, the game. I say it paid off in the long run. Yeah, because he ended up winning the World Boxing Council Heavyweight Championship from Trevor Berbick. On November 22nd, 1986. So almost a year after the game's released, Tyson actually won the title. So That's quite convenient. Yeah, and you know, all those people, all those people and the kids that had the game before he won the title were probably like super jazzed to be like, oh, he's the champion. So that's probably pretty cool. So in the arcade version, there was no plot to the game and there was no cutscenes. you just started right into it you're ready to box yeah just go right forward and start punch his faces in until they fall down and count to 10 yep uh soda pops i can't say his name soda popinski there See, you this go is, you got it you got it finally. you were close <laughs> so he was originally called vodka drunk drunkinski in yes. the arcade version <laughs> yes he was drinking a, a bottle of booze of his choice i guess but yeah i thought that was pretty funny people still claim there is alcohol in that bottle in his 
quote soda pop bottle. Well, he, yeah, he's from Russia, isn't he? Yeah, he is. That's why so, his name's Vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, yeah, they toned it down because you know this Nintendo Entertainment System was supposed to be for children, so children don't toned get drunk. It down the other stereotypes of this game, holy hell! Well, you can I leave mean, a it, wine bottle or whatever the hell in there, a vodka bottle. <laughs> it could have looked like a water bottle. So I told you about the uh, the Mario wasn't supposed to be the referee. Mm-hmm. So this is a really fun one. The game, this game, and Super Mario Bros. made people believe that they were getting something called Nintendo Neck. Oh, from sit from sitting with your head at like a hunched over position for hours playing these games. So like they had chiropractors and stuff. So, like claiming Nintendo games were bad for children because it was hurting their necks. <laughs> I had a Nintendo hand once for playing Mario Party. Were your hand cramped up? No, where you ripped the skin off your hand. Oh my gosh. You never had that? No. When you're playing Mario Party on the 64 and you gotta do the games where you circle all the time? Oh, yes. We used to use the palm of our hands for that. And I like, know. I did, too. I know what you're talking about now. I, I was thinking, like, th- on the thumbs. And I was like, no, that's never happened to my thumb. No, no, not my thumb at all. On your palm. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about when you had to spin the joystick and stuff. Yeah, and they, were like, released, like, they gave away Band-Aids and other things. But we'll talk about them review more probably in a <laughs> month or so. <laughs> uh Many of the game's character sprites are used for two characters each. They just change the skin tone, and they give them a different head, and they give them different moves and special moves. So that's what makes them a little bit different. But if you look, most... Yeah, it kind of, now that you mention that, the like Glass Joe and Don Flamingo are kind of the same, but just different heads. Yeah, uh, Bald Bull and uh, Popinski, I think, have the same bodies, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah they they yeah, reuse big the upper sprites. torso, little legs. Yep, and, and you can tell when you look at them, you can tell their heads are just kind of plopped on. It, it's when you see it, it's hard to unsee. So I'm sorry that I just ruined this for everyone that's played this game or will play this game. <laughs> Actually, I'm not. I, I don't care. That's what we're here for—to ruin games. We're not here to celebrate our childhood. We're here to ruin it. Mike Tyson's uh, sprite was used for Mr. Dream when he was taken out of the games. So, this is pretty neat. If you use code 135-792-4680 and hold select... You hear, hey, it's me, Doc. Would you like to have a good time? <laughs> it's no, been... not really. What, what do you... I, I had to go with the sex line joke. It's been rough times for Doc. He's uh, changed to 1-900 numbers. <laughs> no, uh, so apparently that code will take you to another world circuit, which I I didn't try this out for myself, but apparently you'll start over the game, and it'll all the, the opponents will be in a different order, and they'll be a lot harder, and if you lose once, you immediately retire. Oh, god damn, I gotta try that. So, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> the, when you said other world, I'm like, am I fighting aliens if I put this in? No. So, entering the code 800-422-2602, it was Nintendo's customer service phone number at the time of the game, and it would set off a busy signal. <laughs> so, Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't try this one yet either. I just I read it and thought it was funny. That's pretty hilarious. Tyson claims that he never played well, it. I watched a video of him playing it. Yeah, yeah. He played it in... Uh, he says he never played it up until 2013. Was it the Jimmy Fallon show or something like that? Yeah, it was that or Conan, one of the two. It was It was a late night talk show, and, and he played it for the first time. I, I don't remember... I watched the video, but I don't remember what he said about it particularly. He didn't do well. I, I wouldn't think so but if he fought these people in real life he'd probably bite their ear off and get a face tattoo after oh my gosh <laughs> please don't hurt us mike tyson what no he was he, he likes comedy man he'll like us if he's seen the hangover <laughs> dun, 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 dun. We're, we're not as funny as those guys yet yet we're, we're practicing we're we're built we're, we're uh going up the circuit trying to get to the top <laughs> 
We're still stuck on Glass Joe, folks. <laughs> uh, so this is really interesting. The, the development of this game started because when they used to make the Donkey Kong cabinets, it's actually two TV monitors, right? So they actually had an overstock of those monitors, and basically Nintendo was like, well, we don't need to make any more Donkey Kong machines. What other? Let's develop another game that needs two screens, basically to use up their overstock inventory. Yeah, and because the arcade version of Punch Out uses two screens, that's what I found a bit jarring when I played it. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah, they've got on the on the top screen. Doesn't it have like all your stats and and everything that's at the top of the screen in the in the NES version, right? Yep. So it's uh, it's needed and not needed. I guess I don't know. I didn't know where I'm at, though, during a fight, as any good fighter should, or a boxer. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was really interesting that this game basically came because they were just like, ah, we got too many Donkey Kong monitors. What's that game with the boxer in it? Let's go! <laughs> um, This is really interesting, too. An unlicensed version of Punch-Out! is on the VX Spectrum and the Commodore 64 called Frank Bruno's Boxing. So you fight Frank Bruno as a boss? I don't know who no, Frank Bruno is, but he he's a I think he's a French boxer, I think is what it said, or something like that. But he um he you actually play as Frank Bruno and there's a couple of characters, just two or three from the Punch Out series in it. Oh, so, so they it, got lazy. Yeah, but it does not have little Mac in it from what I understand. Yeah, so. we're gonna rip this game off and you know, come see come sa. And we'll keep a couple characters in, and here we go. That's a, that's a shitty French turn into Italian. <laughs> I thought it was decent. You were close. Well, especially being Canadian, they can do a French accent. <laughs> um. So, if you don't know, the crowd sometimes gives you hints when to strike your opponent. One being when Bald Bull goes to do his super attack, his little bouncy charge at you the player can do a body blow when a there's a little light on a camera that flashes on the right side of the ring fuck off i didn't know that yeah dude as soon as i read this i went back to play that level and it's easy there's one where uh on the left yeah i always like time to know just by their movements and body language like i said but i didn't know i'm gonna have to check that out apparently that one went undiscovered for 22 years until one of the developers were like hey to beat Ball Bull, wait till that light flashes. And then smack and, him around. And like there's the Ball an, Bull bitch he is. There's another one. I think it's when you fight Ball Bull a second time. or it, It's it's one of the ones that I kept getting stuck on. But he does, he winks at you. It's, let me back up. He's on the left of uh, your opponent, and he's got a beard. And when he, like, winks or nods his head or something, that's when you attack. So, like, in the crowd, there's people that help you. You just have to figure out which goes to which. Damn. And it, make, and it makes me wonder how many are still undiscovered. It's like you know? little Maxception. Yeah, so that, I thought that was cool. I like that. I like those little like nods in the crowd to show you how to do things. I never, ever knew that. Wow, even I'm learning something today. You really have to pay attention because sometimes you're... Because the crowd's all doing Everyone stuff. Everyone knows it's hard for me to do. <laughs> there's there's probably a couple more that i can't think of right now so anyways um so mike tyson being replaced on the game by mr dream and that was simply due to his contract being up like i said a minute ago he had a a three-year deal for his likeness and his name right so i don't know why nintendo didn't negotiate a new contract with him but instead they just replaced him and took off Mike Tyson's punch out and just called it punch out from there on out and used Mr. Dream. So that's the the short story of that. Now, when I was younger, I always remember it being because of his uh uh sexual assault issue. Yes. That, <laughs> now, that's true to a point. That was an awkward it, laugh, not a laugh laugh. <laughs> there was going to be a sequel called Mike Tyson's intergalactic power punch 
and in this one he was gonna fight aliens and go all over the galaxy and that's become... where the aliens came from before yeah. <laughs> but yeah this one is why they scrapped his name off the project because of his sexual assault in 1991 so they took his name out and they renamed the game Power Punch 2, and it came out in 1992, which there is no Power Punch 1, but it's actually the sequel to Punch-Out. How fucking bizarre is that? Yeah, that's pretty pretty bizarre. I've never played this, so I don't know if it's any good or, or anything like that. So I may have played it. I have slight memories of it. That's why I mentioned Aliens. I remember Aliens. I'm punching Aliens. Yep, it's... Uh, so it could, I could have rented it from Blockbuster uh, once upon a time. Power Punch 2. So, we, yeah. But yeah, I still don't understand why they... Hey, we like... should look into that one for a review down the road. Hell yeah. I, I, I'm all for it. I just don't understand why they didn't like try to re-up with his likeness and name before that incident. Like, I wonder if, the, if he was asking for too much money, what the deal was, you know? Well, they could, they could have called him Mr. Wonderful Punches Aliens. <laughs> yeah, they could. Not Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Dream. <laughs> God damn you, Shark Tank. But that's it for my fun facts. How about the rage meter? Oh, let's get the raging. Oh, come on! Ah! So, who wants to go first? Me or you? I'll go first on this one. Yeah. Get- Get in the ring. Tell us. Tell us how you how you oh, rage. I'm on squaring this. up right now against Glass Joe. I'm gonna break his nose. <laughs> I'm damn good, and that's the life that I chose. It's going down. <laughs> Punch out. That's the name of the game. Shout out to Dwayne and Brando again. <laughs> but uh, not being skilled at this game when I first started picking it up a few years ago, and uh, had fond memories of it, I would give this game a definite like eight. Right now, where I'm at, I'm comfortable with the game, knowing how to beat everything and everything like that. I'd give it a, probably about a 6.5 on the rage meter. It gets very, very difficult at times, but as I said in the last few episodes, you can just grind, 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 and get the gold at the end. Just knock those bitches out when you get the star. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a 7. Because if you don't Not learn too the, far off. Yeah, it, it, I feel like it has to do with the learning the patterns. And if you're not good with learning patterns, you're not going to have a fun time. Yeah. But I, I feel like even when you learn the patterns sometimes, it, it'll piss you off to no other. Like when Because you have to be perfect to time everything right. And some and fighters have different uh, like things they'll throw at you. They'll change it up every now and then just really fuck you up. Yeah, so I think that's why I'm going to give it a 7, just because uh, the the patterns are sometimes so difficult, and you, like I said, you when you get knocked down, you just want to cuss and scream and yell, this goddamn game's cheating again. But you want to th- get knocked down, but you get up again. <laughs> They're never going to keep you down. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, it's old Chumba Wumba. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, how about we uh, we give this baby a rating? Yes, let's do that right now. You go first. I went last on the rage meter. I went first on the rage meter. We give a 1 to 10 rating on what we think of the game, and I'm going to give this one a 7.5. I'm always happy to play this game. I don't think it's... 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 Better than an average game. Like, this is a game that I know I'm going to have fun. I'm, I know it's going to be a good time. But my problem is I get kind of bored with it once I get to about the third circuit. And I think that's why I have a hard time on the third circuit. And I think it's just because that difficulty ramps up. Yeah, So I get it. I, I it's think, definitely a AAA title from Nintendo. It's one of their top games from that system. Yeah, I, I think for a for a casual gamer, the first two circuits are going to be what gives you the issues. But and for, for like, a hardcore gamer, the other ones are going to be the one that makes you like go through it and just like I got to beat these guys no matter how. Yeah, so I feel like I'm right there in between. That's why I say the third circuit's where I get stuck, and it's 
it's fun. I have fun. I love everything about it. I think it's a wonderful game. I'd recommend it to anyone. Hell, I made a nine-year-old play it who doesn't give a shit about old video games. So He know. almost made it through the first two, so... Yeah, yeah, he got... Yeah, he did get through the first two boxers, and then he was stuck on the third one. I, I think it was... Honda. Yeah, Honda's the third in the first circuit. So he got stuck at Honda, and he, like I said, his rage was 10. <laughs> but, but he was loving it while he was playing it. So myself, I'll give this game a, a solid 8. 8? Okay. We're 5 apart again. Not too far apart here on this one. Right. But uh, yeah, nostalgic feature, and I played this game all the time throughout my childhood, my teenage years my mid-teenage years and to my adult years now. I'm not even that old, but I'm still still playing this game religiously. I go back and play it a few times a year just to dust off my gloves, you know, and just make sure I still got it. Max in my corner, as always. It's not ready to throw the towel in, so I'm going to KO these motherfuckers for the world <laughs> to see. I, you know, it, it will be a sad day when I forget the patterns of at least the first two circuits, because that's the ones that I, I can I can damn near defeat everyone in the first round. I'll be in the nursing home when I forget the, the patterns of this game. <laughs> I'll be there like, hey, Myrtle, watch me beat Mike Tyson. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Finish him. You can find me on Twitter at GoobsWN. You can also find me on my other show, The Derailers. You can find that on Twitter, at The Derailers. And that's with my wonderful wife, Jenny Bean, and my best friend, Ripkin. We sit down, run the train, not the tracks, every single damn day of the week. Not every single damn day. Every single week of the month. There, that sounds better. And, uh, you know, who knows what we're going to talk about, because we sure don't. But we're going to have a great time as we do so. You can also find me on my other little side project there. Find us on the Twitter at, at Derail Wrestling and on YouTube at Russell Nerds Wrestling. And we go on there and we make a whole bunch of CAWs from WWE 2K18. We battle them all out against each other. We have some shit that's greater than the main product out there right now. And uh, sit back, relax, and have some wrestling fun. That's right. Toby, let's throw it to you, player one. Well, you can catch me on the Secret Transmission podcast. We talk about the supernatural, serial killers, cults, conspiracies, all kinds of spooky stuff like that with a satire outlook on it. And you can find us on all the major podcasting platforms. And you can find us on social media at Secret Transpod on Instagram and Twitter. And as for the Secret Levels podcast, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Secret Levels Pod. And we also have a Facebook page. Just go look up the Secret Levels podcast and follow it. If you want some sweet ass logos, we came up with a whole bunch of new ones recently. And you can find that at tpublic.com slash secret levels. We've got a Streets of Rage 2 parody t-shirt we've we got, got a sick ass mega man t-shirt logo it, it's pretty cool I, oh, I'm it's, pretty it's proud absolutely that. amazing we've also got a grand theft auto one uh it's supposed to look like vice city it's got the pink around some of it go look at them they're really cool vice and city is pretty it, it's uh we need a logo with a kitty maybe showing a little titty <laughs> I'll make that just for you now. <laughs> Secret Levels podcast, like a cat with nipples. <laughs> That's not but, from a uh, video game. Yet. <laughs> We're in development of one. Ah, uh, uh, Doc, I don't think I got this, man. I don't think I got this. I think my nose is broken. Stick and move, Mac. Just stick and move. Who the fuck is Mac? My name is Mac. I just got defeated in the first round. I went down twice. I got up at the nine count, man. I'm not doing too good. This guy's absolutely massive. His name is King Hippo. I don't think I can beat this guy. He's gelatinous. He's like a blob. Join the Nintendo Fun Club today, Mac. That speaks wonders to me, Doc. Thank you. That's all I need. I definitely got this guy. Come on, King Hippo. Let's do this one more time. Put him away. Do this for you, dog! 